Hello and welcome to the review which we all knew was coming, it was just a matter of when, in Gran Turismo 7. And for those who are new to the channel, maybe this is your first video of mine that you've watched, I've actually done a couple of other videos in the game about this car as well. I did a top speed tune for it, 245 miles an hour, which is pretty good, no way near as quick as it used to be though, and we'll get to the reason why in a second. And I did a video for those who are interested in the pure sound of the car, wherein I'm driving it in one of the driving missions. A mission where, of course, all of you guys can drive it as well, technically, once you reach that point in the game. Now, to that point, I would strongly recommend getting your hands on the driving missions and levelling up so that you can drive this car. And as you naturally work through, you'll see one of the events allows you to use it. And that will be a great gauge on if you like the way it feels. Because, of course, it's a complete stock one that you're driving. Because... The most common question that I get asked about the 2J, even on those other videos, is how do you actually get it? Because it's not in the dealership, it's not in the used car dealership yet at least, it hasn't appeared in the Legends one, although it may at some point, I guess. Well, the answer is simple. You have to reach level 6 missions, which is the final level, and get all gold trophies. So it's certainly not an easy car to win, but I actually think that is a good choice. It should be given that kind of respect, and I'm glad they made it a challenge to win it, because, let's be honest, it's one of the most OP cars in Gran Turismo history. Now, with that in mind, what's the spec? Because, of course, you don't have access to that unless you own the car. Well, the performance points stock is basically a hair under 875 points. So, as you'd expect, super high. My tuned version, I'm not using a tuned one in this video, this one's stock, but a tuned one that I did the speed tune with is something like 903 points. So it's pretty high, it's not a group one car, it's not a group anything, it just has a point level, which is great, I'm so glad that group X isn't a thing in this game. And in terms of the spec, that is an interesting change from Gran Turismo's past, because you cannot really do much to it in terms of actual parts. The power, for example, cannot be upgraded, so there is no more 1000 horsepower 2J, which is a bit of a shame, but clearly they're going more for the realism rather than the meme car, which is what it used to be. Now with that in mind, you're looking at 683 horsepower, and of course it barely weighs anything at 821 kilos. So the power to weight is fantastic, of course the performance is still very strong, even with the stock 3-speed gearbox, it can do over 200 miles an hour. As I said, tuned, interestingly, with the racing swap to a 5-speed gearbox for the first time ever in Gran Turismo for this car, huge advantage, because back in the day, although the 3-speed was cool, Let's be honest, it was pretty sluggish. You always had to decide between whether you wanted acceleration or top speed. With that five-speed swap, it makes it even more of a force to be reckoned with. Now, there's something I want to address, a very important thing in terms of if you don't own this car yet, and that is to measure your expectations. Because those of you who like to look at what driving aids I'm using, and I know there are plenty of you, We'll notice, of course, that I have, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, the handling assist, or the steering assist, turned on. That is, I would say, at least if you're running it stock, essential to enjoy this car. Now, for everything else in the game, I've reached the point where now that I'm back into the groove of Gran Turismo, I don't use that anymore. For this car, though, I still do, even now that I'm back in the groove, because it just doesn't handle in arguably the way it should it feels like they've got something a little bit wrong there. Because in real life, the drivers who did drive this thing said that it cornered like nothing else at the time. It's not like that in the game. In the game, it's extremely twitchy, it loves to spin up its wheels at low speeds, and even if you're really smooth with it, it's extremely snappy and twitchy. So it should not be that way based on what real-world drivers have said, now, to clear up just a little bit of real-world background, there's a ton of misinformation, incidentally, about this car. People think it was so dominant that it was banned and all that kind of stuff, and even myself, I believe that, but just to clear that up, the 2J never won a race. It finished 15th overall in the can season of that year, and yes, there were plenty of complaints about it, and incidentally, I absolutely love the response which Jim Hall, one of the guys behind the car, behind Chaparral, gave when the driver said that he was flicking up stones or that the drivers were flicking up stones into their helmets while racing his response was simply well why don't you pass me then 
which I think is an, a brilliant response, and I just respect the guy even more for saying that. Now, in terms of is it useful, can you use it in career mode, is it worth that kind of effort, on the point of being a collector's piece, absolutely it is. It's one of the coolest collector's cars in all of Gran Turismo. In terms of sheer performance, absolutely, it is a force to be reckoned with. Even with traction control turned off, as long as you have that steering assist, there are not many race cars in the game that this cannot strike fear into, especially if you tune the gears and get a bit of extra top speed out of it. Overall, I would say it's 100% worth the effort, although there aren't too many events where you'll necessarily need the car, there are plenty of events where you can use the car if they have, for example, unlimited points in you know in order to enter so ultimately i would say the 2j is a very good car in this game it's far better in gt7 than it would have been were it in gt sport that's for sure and i'm so glad that they brought it back and as you'll have seen in the video it's so good to see it in full hd glory with that beautiful interior yeah it, it's an old friend i'm glad to see it back and it really is up there with like the top two or three cars that I would love to see back the most, with of course my number one always being the Renault Espas F1. Ultimately though, super happy that they brought it back. It is very challenging to win for new players, but definitely worth the effort as far as I'm concerned, and you don't technically need to win it to drive it, because one of the lower level missions allows you to do so. So work your way through those missions, you will get the chance to drive it before you even own it, and at least that'll give you an idea of whether you want to put in that kind of effort or not. Ultimately though, stick around on the channel for more car reviews. I recently reviewed another car, of course, the returning Alpha 155 DTM car, and there will be plenty more reviews in future as well. So until next time, I'll see you then, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.